this video is all about some of the properties of ionic and covalent compounds. In this video, we're going to be looking at three of the different properties of these compounds and comparing them. In particular, we're going to start with electrical conductivity, followed by solubility, followed by their volatilities. So enjoy! First of all, let's compare ionic and covalent substances and look at whether they conduct electricity or not. The first thing we need to think about is what actually causes a substance to conduct electricity. And that is that the substance needs either free electrons, so electrons that are free to move within the structure to carry the charge, or it needs free ions. So it needs something that can move, that can carry the charge through the structure. If we look at covalent compounds, all of these compounds have electrons. So they do fulfill that one category. What they don't have is electrons that are free to move. So it's really important that the electrons are free to move and in all of these cases, they are not. Therefore, all covalent substances do not conduct electricity. The one exception to this rule is a substance called graphite that you might have come across before. It's a giant covalent structure arranged in layers. What it's also got is it's got delocalized electrons between those layers that can travel through them. And that means that they can act as charge carriers and can cause it to conduct electricity. Let's move on to thinking about ionic compounds. You probably already know that ionic compounds are arranged in a three dimensional lattice when they are a solid structure. These, the grey and the green circles here, they represent a sodium and a chlorine. Sodium chloride is a quite common ionic compound. Both of these are ions, they are charged particles, but as you can see, they are not free to move. So we've got the same problem that we had with the covalent compounds. If we melt or we put the ionic compound in solution, so we dissolve it in water, what we can do is we can start to break apart this structure. And as it breaks apart, what you end up with is ions that are completely free to move. So ionic compounds can conduct electricity, but only when they're molten or in solution. If you keep them as a solid, it has ions, but they can't move, so it can't conduct electricity. Let's talk about solubility. Solubility is actually crazy complicated, and if you go to do chemistry at a higher level, you'll be able to explain this in a lot more detail in a couple of years' time. For now, what you need to know is that ionic compounds are normally soluble in water, and covalent compounds are normally insoluble in water. There are a huge amount of exceptions to this rule, but generally for IGCSE, this is the pattern that they want you to know about. The way you can remember this is that if you think about ionic compounds as sodium chloride or table salt, you know a lot about table salt already. And you know that table salt dissolves in water, hopefully. Um, if you remember that, then all ionic compounds dissolve in water because table salt is an ionic compound and it dissolves in water. So volatility is the last one we need to look at in this video. And volatility is all about how easy it is to evaporate a substance. Let's compare the covalent and ionic compounds. So if we're turning them into a liquid, the ionic substance to turn into a liquid, I'm gonna to have to break all of these blue bonds here. And these are the strong electrostatic attractions between the positive ions and the negative ions. They are super crazy strong and really, really hard to break. That kind of follows what you would expect because basically what I'm asking is how easy is salt to evaporate? And hopefully you realize that actually salt is really, really hard to evaporate. And that is due to these strong electrostatic attractions between the ions. Let's compare that with the covalent compounds. So what I've got here is two molecules of methane or CH4. These are bonded by covalent bonds here 
And if we imagine that they are currently a liquid, so they're close together, but they've got enough energy to move past each other. When they evaporate, what happens is they move really, really far apart from each other. What you should be able to see is that I haven't broken any of these covalent bonds here. All that I did was move my two methane molecules further apart from each other. What I broke was something called the intermolecular forces. So the thing that holds the methane in this liquid are very weak forces called intermolecular forces. And when it turns into a gas, they break so that they can turn into the gas and be super far away from each other. So here I've made a small summary table for you. What you'll see is for the volatility, ionic compounds are less volatile than covalent compounds due to those strong electrostatic attractions in the ionic and the weak intermolecular forces in the covalent. In terms of their solubility in water, ionic compounds are way more likely to be soluble in water than covalent compounds. The reason for that is definitely beyond IGCSE. In terms of the conductivity, the electrical conductivity, ionic substances can conduct, but only when they are in liquid form. So when they've been molten or melted, or when you've dissolved them in water and made it into a solution. Covalent compounds can't conduct electricity at all. They don't have any delocalized electrons or free ions unless you're talking about graphite. I hope today that this has summarized for you the different properties and how they link to ionic and covalent substances. A lot of this is really simplified chemistry, so if you want to find out more, definitely go away and do some research or ask your teacher some more information.